The opening scene features Lee Young Ho, a man enjoying a drink at a small shop run by an elderly woman. With his drink finished, he makes his way back to North Korea, only to be confronted by a group of South Korean policemen who begin to chase him. Despite the sudden confrontation, Lee Young Ho remains composed and chooses to surrender himself peacefully. However, as he reaches into his pocket, the policemen become wary of his actions, and before he can even explain himself, they open fire, ending his life in a tragic moment of misunderstanding and mistrust. The scene then shifts to Yoduk Labor Prison Camp, where we meet Lee Young Ho's son, Ri Myung Hoon, and daughter, Ri Hai Yin, who is revealed to have been imprisoned deliberately as a guarantee for her father. It turns out that Lee Young Ho was a North Korean intelligence agent on a covert mission in Seoul. Young Ho's superior, Colonel Moon Sang Chul, summons the 18 year old Myung Hoon and offers him, as well as his sister, freedom. But in exchange, he must become a North Korean intelligence agent like his father. Two years later, in Seoul, we see a North Korean secret agent known as Big Dipper from Unit 35. He seems to have been tasked with eliminating all sleeper agents from Unit 8 because the government factions that shadow them are at odds. On the other hand, Myung Hoon arrives in Seoul to fulfill his mission as an intelligence agent and takes up the name Kang Dae Ho. Not long after, he's adopted by a couple who are also undercover North Korean spies. In order to keep their mission a secret, Dae Ho starts attending high school as a regular student. On his first day, he introduces himself in front of the class and sits next to a seemingly innocuous student named Lee Hai In. During their break, a group of bullies approaches Dae Ho and Lee to bully them. One of the bullies even places his hand on Dae Ho's shoulder, but he quickly brushes it away. Later, the bully gang takes him to the school rooftop, where they beat him up and take away all of his money. Regardless, Dae Ho does not resist because he does not want to cause an unnecessary scene. However, his rage grows when the bullies take away his family photo and begin making fun of his sister. He instantly grabs the photo and slips it into his pocket. The brawl is about to start, but fortunately, a teacher arrives and dismisses them all. In the next scene, Dae Ho returns home to find a parcel containing a cell phone for him. When he activates it, he receives a call from the colonel, who instructs him to gather the necessary equipment and eliminate Big Dipper. As per the instructions, Dae Ho goes to a pastry shop from where he receives a cake containing a gun. He also learns about Big Dipper's man, prompting him to pay a visit to a boxing club. When the man refuses to reveal Big Dipper's whereabouts, Dae Ho shoots him in the leg forcing him to reveal about the butcher who has seen Big Dipper. Unfortunately, the man does not comply and instead tries to attack, so Dae Ho is compelled to kill him. Following this, he goes to the butcher and holds him at gunpoint in order to obtain Big Dipper's license number. Dae Ho is about to leave with the information, but the butcher tries to kill him. Even this time, Dae Ho executes his target with utter ease. The following day, he somehow manages to locate the Big Dipper's car and begins pursuing him on his Ducati. When the car comes to a stop at a red light, Dae Ho pulls out his gun and aims at Big Dipper. Unfortunately, Big Dipper notices him and quickly accelerates his car. Dae Ho keeps firing at the car until a bullet hits one of the wheels, causing it to skid off the track. This draws the attention of the public, due to which Dae Ho is unable to eliminate him. One day at school, the bully gang takes the innocent Lee to a room, seizes all of her money, and starts bullying her in the worst way. When she tries to fight back, they accidentally tear her shirt. Right then, Dae Ho walks in, and believing that she's being harassed, he uses his fighting skills to beat up the bullies. After taking all of them down, he gives her his blazer. The next day, Lee doesn't show up to school, which worries Dae Ho. He attempts to find out her address from the delinquent students who frequently bullied her. Out of fear, the leader of the bully gang informs him of Lee's workplace. After school, Dae Ho visits her workplace, only to discover that she has quit the school, as well as the job, in order to work somewhere else. The next day, as Dae Ho is walking back to his place, Lee suddenly approaches him. She seems to have changed her appearance with a new haircut. Lee returns his blazer and asks him for a favor. She wants him to pretend to be her older brother so that she can be accepted at her new job. Dae Ho gladly accepts, 
and the two converse on their way back. When she mentions the word siblings, he tells her about his sister, who has a similar name as hers. Lee then talks about herself and reveals that she's been living alone since her parents' deaths. In addition, she expresses her desire to go to a place where no one would recognize her. Hearing all this, Dae Ho becomes sad for her. Elsewhere, Big Dipper is aware of Dae Ho's as well as his adoptive parents' true identities. Hence, without further ado, he goes to their place and executes Dae Ho's adoptive parents. He then orders his men to take away the house's treasures while he decides to wait for Dae Ho. After a while, Dae Ho returns home and gets devastated to see the corpses of his adoptive parents. He slowly walks into the living room, only to be met by the executioner, who remarks, little young to be a killer. Following this, a fierce battle ensues between the two agents, both of whom are skilled fighters. For the first few minutes, neither of them can overpower the other, but Dae Ho eventually triumphs and kills Big Dipper. He then leaks a combustible gas and implants a massive explosion, destroying all of the dead bodies as well as the evidence. Assuming his mission is complete, Dae Ho goes to the small shop owned by the same old lady from the first scene. Every North Korean intelligence agent who has completed their mission in Seoul appears to visit the old lady in order to return to their homeland. But before the lady can serve Dae Ho a drink, he collapses on the ground. The next day, a South Korean intelligence agent named Jung Min goes to investigate the burned house and discovers the school attribute pinned to Dae Ho's uniform. After conducting additional investigations, he learns of Dae Ho's true identity, discovering that he is a North Korean spy. On the other hand, the old lady looks after Dae Ho and serves him food after he regains consciousness. During this, he displays a photograph of his late parents and his only sister, making her realize that Dae Ho is Young Ho's son. Later that evening, he receives another cell phone in the parcel. A short while later, he receives a phone call from the colonel, who assigns him one last mission before allowing him to meet his sister. His new mission is to recover all of the treasures that Big Dipper's men had previously stolen. In addition, the colonel sends him a short video of his sister, demonstrating that she is unharmed. The following day, Dae Ho heads to a predetermined location where he takes out everyone and successfully retrieves the diamonds worth millions of won. After this, he purchases items for the elderly lady as a farewell gift because he will soon be returning to North Korea. He also takes some time to meet Lee and bids farewell to her. That night, he goes to an agent who is supposed to hire him a boat to return home. To his surprise, the agent stabs him claiming that no agent has ever returned home. But Dae Ho does somehow manage to fight and kill the agent. Meanwhile, the forces of the South Korean intelligence agency apprehend all North Korean spies who pretended to be South Korean residents. Injured, Dae Ho returns to the old lady only to discover that she too has been surrounded by police. When the granny tries to fight the cops, she is shot dead. As he witnesses this, Dae Ho's eyes well up with tears, and he secretly flees the scene. He then goes to Lee's place to hide himself from the cops. As soon as Lee notices he's injured, she assists him in treating his wounds and then allows him to rest. While Dae Ho is asleep, Lee watches the news on TV and learns his true identity as a North Korean spy. Regardless, she does not report him to the police because he is her only friend and has been very helpful to her. The next morning, Lee is at the grocery store where the secret South Korean intelligence agent, Jung Min, approaches her and inquires about Dae Ho, knowing that they were classmates. However, she does not reveal anything, claiming that she never saw him after she left school. Before departing, he hands her his business card and instructs her to contact him if she receives any information about Dae Ho. In the next scene, the colonel arrives in South Korea with Dae Ho's sister. He believes Dae Ho has betrayed them and he is now leaning towards South Korea. Afterwards, he calls Dae Ho to let him know that he and Ri Hai In have arrived in Seoul. He also orders him to meet at a specific location and hand over the treasures in exchange for his sister. Lee overhears everything they say through the door. Early in the morning, Dae Ho leaves to meet with the colonel as per the deal. Soon after, Lee awakens to find that Dae Ho has left her a letter in which he asks her to look after his sister if anything bad happens to him. 
This makes her worried, so she calls Jung Min and tells him everything. A short while later, Dae Ho meets the colonel in a parking lot where he notices his sister chained up in a car. He then shows him a black pouch containing the diamonds. Dae Ho is about to hand it over to the colonel, but just then, one of the colonel's men tries to shoot him from behind. Luckily, the South Korean police arrive just in time and take out the gunman. The agents then engage in a dangerous shootout. When the colonel notices a large police force, he orders his man to drive ri hai in away while he himself has a narrow escape. Dae Ho pursues the car in order to rescue his sister, but the car is soon apprehended by police. Seeing this from a distance, he runs away to avoid being apprehended. The same evening, the colonel calls Dae Ho to inform him that he has abducted Lee. He also threatens to kill her if the diamonds are not returned. Later, Dae Ho, who is concerned about his sister, calls Jung Min and assures him that he will surrender once his remaining work is completed. He also requests him to let him talk to his sister, which makes him feel a bit relieved. He then sobs, remembering his misfortune. Afterwards, he gathers all his courage and decides to call it quits for good. Following this, he proceeds to the location where the colonel and his men have taken Lee as hostage. Before entering the building, he dials Jung Min's number and leaves the phone on his motorcycle, allowing Jung Min to track his location. Inside, Dae Ho shows the diamonds but does not give them to the colonel. Instead, he throws them away and starts firing on the colonel's men. However, during the process, he is also shot. A few moments later, he somehow manages to detonate the bomb in his bag, killing almost all of Colonel's men. After this, as Dae Ho and Lee are about to leave, the last remaining thug attacks Dae Ho. Left with no options, the courageous protagonist orders Lee to run away while he tries to fight back. Soon after, the Colonel walks in, having survived the explosion. He's about to shoot Dae Ho, but in the nick of time, Jung Min intervenes. Despite the warning, Dae Ho shoots the colonel, but he also gets shot by another bullet, wounding him severely. In order to save his life, Jung Min and Lee rush him to the hospital. On the way, Dae Ho insists that he must visit his sister, who is waiting for him. Unfortunately, he takes his final breath on Lee's arm before arriving at the hospital. In the final scene, Lee, as Dae Ho's last wish, takes Ri Hai in with her and they walk away, reminiscing about the late Dae Ho.